My cheating wife got a tattoo with her affair partner's name. Then she cried when I got a tattoo of our divorce date. My ex-wife and an I are in her mid-thirties. We were married three years, together five years total, after our engagement party and told me she wants to get matching tattoos. I told her I have nothing against tattoos, I just don't want one. After the wedding, she again asked to get matching tattoos. I said no again. I told her she can get a tattoo if she wants, but I'm not interested. She said it's something she wants to do as a couple and won't get one unless I get a matching one. I still refused, but she rings it up again every six months or so and is more insistent every time. Recently, she was promoted and transferred at her job. One of her new co-workers has settled tattoos and she has spoken to him about it. He suggested I wasn't a man if I was scared to get a tattoo. She asked me if I was scared to get a tattoo. I said I'm not scared, there's just no reason to do it. Then added, I understand why your friend at work would insult my manhood. He's trying to get into your pants. But why would you throw his words in my face? Her response was, if the shoe fits, then she got up, went to the bedroom and slammed the door. That was when I began to suspect that she was sleeping with the co-worker. She didn't talk to me for two days. A few days later, she told me she was going shopping. That evening, she came home and showed me her new tattoo. Two Chinese symbols on her forearm. She said they mean strength and independence. When I looked closer, I saw there were English letters, JW, beneath the Chinese ones. I asked her about the initials. She was silent a while, took a deep breath, and said they were her co-worker's initials. She had taken her to his tattoo artist. He had suggested those particular Chinese characters. He stayed with her and lent support while she got inked. She wanted to honor that support and their friendship, so she had his initials tattooed beneath the symbols. Controlling my anger, I told her that having another man's initials tattooed on her body was disrespectful to me and that she should have them removed. She said I was trying to control her and that I said she could have the tattoo and refused to share the tattoo experience with her. So she had chosen to share that experience with a friend who wasn't scared of a little needle. I sat there at a loss wondering how could she not see that it's disrespectful. We barely spoke the next few days, and when we did the tattoo was always the subject. She said I should get over it, and there's nothing wrong with having JW's initials tattooed on her arm. I asked if she was sleeping with JW. She hesitated, then said yes, and actually sneered at me. At least he's a man. She said, the detail of our breakup and divorce aren't important other than to say that it was not contested. The few times we spoke during the process we were civil to each other. The day the divorce was finalized I called her and told her I finally had a good reason to eat. So I got a tattoo. I said my tattoo also symbolizes strength and independence. My tattoo is the date our divorce was final. She was silent a while. When she began to cry, I hung up. Second cheating story. My mom had an affair with my brother's wife. Yeah, you read that right. This is a 100% true story that I've been wanting to get off my chest for a while. So my brother, 25 male, met his wife, 25 female, in his last year of pharmacy school and the two of them got engaged very soon after meeting only about four or five months. This is how people in our culture usually get married. During the time that they were engaged, they would spend a lot of time together but they were never allowed to be completely alone together until they were married. Again, another culture thing. So this meant that she spent a lot of time at my house where either me, my sister, or my mom would stay with them. So all got pretty comfortable around each other, and this is where it started to get weird. My mom, 44, would be a little too friendly with my sister-in-law, for example. If we were watching a movie, they would sit next to each other. Then that turned into leaning on one another, then full-on cuddle. Another example is they would be on FaceTime, literally 24-7. I'm talking about waking up together and falling asleep on the phone together. It got so bad that my brother would complain that he never could call her because she was always too busy talking to my mom. Eventually, me and my sister called my mom out on this saying it was a little weird that she was always on the phone with her, and of course she's very angry we called her out on this, but she said they are just really close and that she would stop calling her so much, but that never happened. She just started to hide it, and then would spend hours on FaceTime without even saying a word. They would just have their AirPods in and listen to each other's background noises and text each other when they wanted to say something. And this went on for the entire engagement. Me and my sister would joke about the two of them being gay lovers, 
but we were always joking because we would never have thought it would get that far. So let's fast forward a couple months of their weird behavior. I come home from work and my mom, sister and sister-in-law were home and my sister also just got home maybe 10 minutes before me and my mom and sister-in-law have been home alone with each other all day. I take a seat on the couch next to my sister and she sends me a text. Go look at what's on mom's bed. Don't make it obvious. So I get up and start walking in my room and peeking very quickly when I pass my mom's room at first. I didn't see anything so took another quick look and that's when I saw a strap on sitting on the corner of my mom's bed. Me and my sister were in complete shock. We both know that they were the only two home all day and they were completely alone. Me and my sister go back and forth on what we should do and probably two days later we tell our brother what we found and he was quick to believe us so he also saw all the red flags. He called his wife and told him he knew what she did and that he wanted a divorce. She immediately called my mom screaming and crying. I could hear my mom's phone from my room right before my mom ran out of the house to her car. I don't know what happened after that. I just know my mom came home a couple hours later and was acting like nothing happened and things were normal for me and my sister for a while. After that eventually my sister told her boss, my brother's friend, that my brother was going to leave his wife. He said something along the lines of, really now I can finally ask you why you have naked videos of her on your laptop. It turns out that my sister asked him for help with one of her college assignments. When he opened the Knots app on the laptop and saw a nude video of sister-in-law, so he closed the tap and pretended like he didn't see anything. But here's the thing, my sister was using my mom's old laptop to do her homework, but my mom's Apple ID was still connected so all the notes from my mom's phone were sent to the laptop notes. So my sister had me pick her up from work early and we raced home to check her laptop and there it was over a dozen pictures and videos of sister-in-law doing extremely inappropriate stuff and literally thousands of screenshots of text messages, conversations, most of which were nothing but just one that I can remember is, I wish I would have met you first. I love you more than I love brother's name. So we sent all of this evidence to my brother and he showed it to his wife and she admitted to everything. The story is getting way too long so if you want me to finish with what happens after he confronts her with everything, me and my sister found. Let me know and I'll finish the story. Update. I guess you guys wanted to know how this story ended. Well here it is. You're probably not going to like it though. I'm going to keep this very short because I'm on the bus on my way to work but after my brother confronted his wife, he stayed out all night until he had to go back to work the next day. I don't know how she reacted because I wasn't there. I don't know where my brother would keep sleep in the days that followed probably his car because my brother was too nice to just kick her out of his apartment, but eventually he came to my house living under the same roof with his mom. He slept on the floor in my room for a while, and the two of them were almost never home together, and when they were they just avoided each other. This was an extremely awkward situation for the entire family. Somehow his wife convinced him to go see a third party where all three of them would go and tell their side of the story. From what I understand, Again, I wasn't there. The person who they want to talk to said that he would have witnessed people come back from much worse things, but in private after my mom and sister-in-law left, he told my brother that he didn't believe that the two of them were ever going to stop being sneaky and he advised my brother to go through with the divorce. But that never happened, I guess. The two of them gassed lit him enough that he believed that he could forgive the two of them. This is his words. If God can forgive everyone no matter what they did, I can forgive them for this or something along the lines of that. So that brings us to present day. My brother moved back to live with his wife, and me and my sister still live with my mom. The reason I decided to write this post in the first place was because it seems like everything is just going back to the way it was. My brother and mom have a completely normal relationship, but me and my sister aren't just forgiving so we are left feeling like we did something wrong. My mom, Brother and sister-in-law have been recently getting too close again like they all went to a wedding in Florida about a month ago, and they took the same flight and shared their rented car while my sister booked a different flight than them. And recently my mom has started doing the FaceTime thing again. She's trying to hide it, but it's very obvious when she has her AirPods in all day and always puts her phone face down. The other day I went to use the sink and I reached for a towel to dry my hands, and my mom jumped to grab her phone which was right next to my hand. And that's when I realized that for the two of them, everything was back to normal and me and my sister were the outsiders and the family now.